Greetings! Welcome to Billing Buddies tutorial video. In this video, we're going to discuss the changes made in version 16 and 17 of Metasoft with the NPI numbers. Should you need additional support, we can link to you live at www.billingbuddies.com. Click on the support link on the left and there will be a support form on the right for you to complete and set up training. So let's get started. My favorite part of Metasoft is this really handy form under the Metasoft help link here in the index tab. You can type the word click. And this click, clickable CMS 1500 form gives us a form that we can click on any field as it says at the top here and it will explain what needs to be on that field and where it comes from in Metasoft. For the purposes of this video, we're going to be dealing with versions um, 16 and 17, boxes 17B, 24J, 32A, and 33A. The first place I'm going to start seems backwards, but it seems the most crucial for reimbursement. 33A is where the payer is looking at to send the checks to. And we want to make sure we have that correct. If we go to help, um, excuse me, file and practice information, then we can see the clinic name, tax ID, the practice type, and entity type. The tax ID should match the name listed in the practice name here. I've seen in the past where DBAs are up here and the 1099s being given to the clinic at the end of the year don't max, match their federal tax ID. So first know what kind of tax ID this is. Is it a group, meaning like a corporation or a partnership or a limited, limited liability company? Or is it an individual tax ID like a social security or a sole proprietor? Again, make sure your practice name and your tax ID match each other. And then once you do that, put down if the tax ID is for a group, an individual, and then again, if the entity type is a non-person, that would be a group, or person, that would be an individual. The next tab, the practice ID. This gives us the ability, this started in version 16, to put conditional items in here. For example, this says for all providers, but we could say for provider Joe Johnson, put a different tax ID or a different NPI number. When you did a conversion, it would have first converted all of the insurance companies into this box. And you either can delete them one at a time, which would be very time consuming, or hit control delete and delete all of them at once. That's what I recommend you do and start fresh. After you start fresh, you want to click new and we're going to build an all default line. So we're going to say for all providers, all insurance companies, all facilities, build with this group NPI number. This again is the NPI number that will go on box 33A. So we'll type the group NPI number here. Next, the taxonomy code. That's the taxonomy code that you were assigned when you applied for your MPI number back in 2007. If you forgot what that is, you can go to NPPES Enumerator and you can Google that and they will, the, you will be able to find that, um, the MPI number. It's specific to specialty. This happens to be the chiropractic code. You could also go to www.cms.com and type taxonomy in the search and it would bring you to that MPPES enumerator service. Also, we would put in here the tax ID code for your practice. And then what we set up here then again is for all providers, all insurance companies, all facilities, it's going to put this group number in box 33A going to send this taxonomy code if you're sending electronically 4010 or 5010. This tax ID in box 25 or the corresponding loop and segment for the 5010 and 4010. The legacy numbers, very few 
insurance companies require that anymore, and the location for that is changing in the 5010 format. But if you had a, an insurance company, say a work comp or a Medicaid that wanted the legacy number in 33B, that's where you put it is in this field. So once we click OK, it shows us that default line again that for all providers, all classes, all insurance companies, it's going to send that information. Now, if we had an exception, say that um, for Medicaid, we build with an individual number, we would click New here and say for this insurance carrier, these are if-then statements, if it's Medicaid, then we're going to bill with a different number here, different group number, the taxonomy is your specialty, that would probably most likely be the same unless you just have two specialties registered differently. And maybe you have a social security number you contracted with on this, this particular payer. So then I'll click it OK. So again, how the program is going to read this is for everyone, it's going to send this information. But if the insurance carrier is Medicaid, it's going to send this information. And again, that's box 33A for the practice information, file and practice. The next field we have to be concerned with is the provider information, and that's found under Providers. And I will just click, this is coming from the tutorial data, by the way, so you'll be seeing the same information if you open your tutorial data on your, your machine. Um, but Dr. Mallard, let's take a look at his. We'll set up Dr. Mallard's provider IDs. Same situation applies. It'll say for all payers, put this out there, except if it's, I believe this is Medicare, we'll put this other information. So you can start with yours. If you've got multiple payers in here, hit Control Delete and delete them. Then hit a new item and you'll get this all line. You want to say for all insurance companies, all facilities, Bill as a group, if you're a group, or if you're an individual, bill as an individual. And then you would put, this is box 24J, the provider's 24J. So you put the provider's information in here, the provider's NPI, the provider's taxonomy code, in the their tax ID that the provider would be reimbursed under. Now I'll look at this exception line that they had built. They said, except if it's insurance carrier Medicare, then bill it as an individual. And this would be the MPI number, the taxonomy code, and the social security number that this provider happens to bill under. Many providers, I'd say 50% of them or more, only need this all line. Some of the providers, if they contracted differently for different pairs, that's when you need the exception line. So we'll click Save. The next area we need to worry about is 17B, and I kind of left that for the last part because not all clinics use that. It's, it's unique circumstances. If you need a referring doctor on file, that's when you need that. And for all your doctors that you have as referring doctors, you want to edit them, go to the referring provider ID, and they need to have an NPI number in here as well. So you'd have your, your MPI number in your taxonomy code. You can look up their taxonomy code at the NTPES registry or at www.cms.gov as well as um, if they can give you that information. Whichever is quicker for you to do, look it up or call them. Next, under 32, is lists and facilities. And this um, 32A, this is where the service was performed. Many clinics just have one item in there, but if a doctor rotates among more than one clinic, you would change the location in box 32A, and the um, NTI would vary. Here is the Facility IDs tab. Again, under the Facility ID, you could say send it to as a facility on the claim. The ID qualifier tells the insurance company what you're sending. So, for example, some of the clinics that use Metasoft are an independent lab, and that's going to be what they're sending. Some clinics are sending their facility information. Whichever applies to your situation, you would pick the appropriate one. 
And then you would put in your MPI number for Box 32A for the facility that was performed at and the ta taxonomy code for that facility type. Now, one trick, last trick that I use um, is if I'm wondering if I did it right or didn't do it right, when we go to print here, we can print some sample claims. Just pick um, the CMS 1500 form that Medicare or Metasoft has uh, put out there for everyone. And you should be able to see the MPI numbers that you you want in the boxes that you've completed for each claim form. So you can test there. If you're going electronically, sometimes it's hard to know what's going in the loops and segments. This is a good check to make sure that they'll be sending them to the proper loops and segments on the claim form. Again, thank you for watching our video today. If you should need additional help or want us to link to you live, we certainly can do that. You can give us a call at 763-546-2455 or print out a support form at www.billingbuddies.com and click on support on the left side and print out the form right there. We're here to help you. Thanks for watching our video and have a great day. Goodbye.